Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Motor vehicle crash in Braco Trelawney leaves three dead and several others injured. Three people are dead and several others injured following a major crash along the Braco Main Road in Trelawney yesterday afternoon. The deceased have not yet been identified, but two of them are said to be the drivers of two of the three vehicles involved. The crash occurred sometime after 1 p.m. Acting head of the Trelawney Police Division, Deputy Superintendent Winston Milton, said a Honda motor car, a Nissan motor bus and a Costa bus were all transporting hotel staff were involved in the crash. Early investigation is indicated that the driver of a white Honda City motor car and the driver of a white Toyota Costa motor bus were traveling westerly along the Brockhamine Road towards the direction of Duncan. As a driver of a white Nissan Irvine was traveling in the opposite direction. Uh, it appears that the driver of the Nissan motor car bus failed to keep to the left hand side of the and collided first with the Honda motor car, then the Toyota Costa. Both drivers you know, instantly killed as a result of the impact. A female passenger from the Nissan motor bus was pronounced dead on arrival at the Falmouth General Hospital. One hotel staff member, Opal Bode, who lives in Brocco, said she almost boarded the staff bus but was signaled by the driver that there was no available seat. She said she interacted with the driver, who is known as pastor on numerous occasions. I'm carrying a woman on every night, so I'm not feeling well right now. I'm weak. I'm nearly, uh, nearly almost on that bus because when he passed, he's saying, trash me and saying, pull up. So I'm like, okay. And by the time I catch on next, the next bus and go on the corner, it was not a good sight. All uh, my co-work up bleeding and chop up and uh, the driver we call him past time died and this instantly on this spot. Right now I'm still nervous and shaking. I don't know if I can go to work tomorrow. Meanwhile, another broker resident, Hilton Brody, described the accident scene as gruesome. She is urging motorists to be cautious on the roadways. It wasn't a good look, trust me. Wasn't a good look. For the, for the staff members of the hotel and the driver also, the two drivers died on spot. And you have a lot of staff members rush off to hospital. I am very much so sorry for the families that going to get this news this evening. All I have to say, motorists, take time on the road. Take time on the road. Meanwhile, staff members of the H10 Ocean Cross Spring Hotel have gathered at the hospital where their injured colleagues were being taken following a motor vehicle accident early in the afternoon. Relatives of the injured workers are also being contacted. A representative told reporters that information about the incident is still being gathered, including how many workers were on the bus. The Costa bus had begun its route from Brownstown to Saint in St. Anne and picked up several workers along its way to the hotel in Trelawney. The hotel representative said, while many workers are injured, some seriously, there is a sense of relief that no hotel staff has died. However, there is grief for the driver of the bus who was contracted through a tour company. A representative of the tour company told reporters that details of the incident are still being gathered and no comment will be made at this time. Road Safety Council urges motorists to take necessary steps to ensure a new school year crash-free. With the expectation that there will be a traffic buildup on the nation roadways when the new school year begins next week, the National Road Safety Council is urging parents and motorists to take the appropriate steps to prevent crashes. In anticipation of a traffic buildup, the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch said it will deploy the necessary human resources to reduce chaos or incidents. However, Executive Director of the National Road Safety Council, Paula Fletcher, told reporters that motorists play a role in ensuring that the new school year is crash-free. We expect that the traffic will increase. The police tell us that they will be out in their numbers because really we haven't had a school year for the last two years where there is full opening of school, so we don't even know what that looks like. So we're asking persons, please, to observe the rules of the road. Think of the other driver. Plan your route. Wear your seat belts. 
don't use your cell phone while driving and do everything that you can to preserve life and limb because at the rate at which we're going, we're going to be over 400 again for 2022 because, you know, the choices we're making on the road. Education Minister Favor Williams says schools are finding qualified replacements after over 200 teachers resign. Education Minister Favor Williams has sought to assure that although 248 teachers have resigned, school administrators are finding qualified replacements. Mrs. Williams, who was speaking at the Back to School press conference yesterday afternoon, said with so many of the vacancies already filled, schools will be in good position to be open on Monday for the new academic year. She noted, for example, that schools in Region 2 have reported that 80% of the vacancies have been filled with qualified teachers. We have 248 resignations. But I want to add, uh, you know, to that, is that many of those vacancies would have already been filled. For example, Region 2, which would be St. Thomas, Portland, and St. Mary, they have reported that 80% of the schools reported that they have replaced teachers who have resigned. And two examples coming out of Region 2, Brown Book Primary and Port Antonio Primary, two very large primary schools, um, they have fully replaced their teachers who have resigned. In Region 4, which is St. Mary, Hanover, and Westmoreland, 75% of vacancies were replaced and interviews are continuing. We would have given to our principals a number of different strategies um, to use for recruiting teachers. Uh, we put out 15 different strategies and just recently we added um, to that the approval that we would have gotten from the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service for teachers who are on their long leave, whether it's four months or eight months, if they're so willing to come back and be their own replacement, that is uh, a facility that is now available. Expect traffic delays on first day of school, warns Education Minister. Education Minister Favor Williams is urging commuters, particularly students and parents, to expect delays and congestion on Monday morning. This coming Monday will represent the first full return of face-to-face -face learning since the COVID-19 pandemic. As is normal, the new school year begins on the first Monday of September. And so on Monday, September 5, we will see the return of our students all across Jamaica to the face-to-face -face environment. As you know, because the majority of our students have to be transported to schools, as would be normal, our streets are going to get congested. There will be more traffic come Monday morning. There will be delays. The ministry will continue its efforts to provide some 7,500 students on path with transportation subsidies of approximately $380 million through a rural transportation program. Uh, this is organized at the school level. Our principals know the part students in their schools and their transportation needs. We implore our students, our parents, and our teachers to be as careful as you can be in traversing our roads um, as we open back our schools for face-to-face. -face. Our system of sending grants to schools has been activated. These include tuition grants, social premium grants, PATH grants, maintenance grant, ICT grant, STEM grant, TVET equipment grant, furniture grant, book grants to schools. The first tranche of the grant has been dispersed. The second tranche is to be dispersed in this September month. And of course, we will continue to support our schools in terms of the year-round maintenance efforts that we have that is well above what the grants that we send for maintenance could cover. Manchester Costas disappointed that monument to honor victims of Kendall crash not yet erected. Costas of Manchester Garfield Green has expressed his appointment that a monument in remembrance of the Kendall crash on September 1, 1957, has not yet been erected. Speaking at a ceremony at the Manchester Parish Library in Mandeville yesterday to mark the 65th anniversary of the crash, which claimed 177 lives, 
Mr. Green said a memorial for the victims is important. He called for the Kendall Cross Science Monument to be quickly erected. I call on our leaders to create this memorial park and to use the funds from it to help restore the lost pride we had in our parish capital, which was once known as the most beautiful town in Jamaica. JSE Managing Director says 100 listing milestone indicates that more Jamaicans appreciate the power of capital to transform country and lives. With 100 companies now listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange JSE, the entity's managing director, Marlin Street Forest, says this is an indication that more Jamaicans are appreciating the power of capital to transform the country and lives. The JSE reached its 100th milestone with the listing of Caribbean Ed Technology Company, one on one educational services. Speaking at an official ceremony to mark the milestone on September 1, Mrs. Street Forest said it is symbolic that the 100th listing on the JSE is a company which has education at its main mandate. She noted that market education has really people interest in the stock market. I'm of the view that market education was an important key which unlocked the box regarding the importance of the stock market in driving wealth creation and economic growth. And it is that key which will propel us towards even more growth in the future. There goes the power in education. Today we are pleased that this young company, young and vibrant company, could make it to the market. We are really pleased to see so many young um, entrepreneurs taking that step to come to market, and especially one-on-one. -on -one. We expect that in continuing to provide value to Jamaica, one-on-one -on -one educational services will ensure real returns to its investors, which is obvious, has confidence in you. We were happy to see that one provided special allocation of its shares to persons in the teaching profession. That's good. Congratulations are in order. The massive oversubscription of this offer confirms that we are at an excellent place where persons are recognizing the potential in the market and are appreciating the power of capital to transform our country and our lives. Brown Burke calls for Samuda's resignation amid Canadian former complaints. The opposition People's National Party is calling on Prime Minister Andrew Holness to replace Labour and Social Security Minister Carl Samuda and launch an immediate investigation into the working conditions of Jamaican's farm workers in Canada. The PNP says it's outraged at what they call the gross and degrading treatment of the farm workers as part of the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Programme. Opposition spokesman on Labour, Dr. Angela Brownberg, says arrangements prevailing under the farm work program are less than desirable. The farm workers program has allowed many Jamaicans to improve the quality of their life since its inception. However, the arrangements that are now prevailing under the program are less than desirable. Under all of these circumstances, the People's National Party is calling on the Prime Minister to replace Minister Carl Samudo launch an immediate investigation and begin discussions with the Canadian authorities to guarantee minimum acceptable working conditions and rights for all farm workers. We expect the Jamaican government to stand in defense of its workers at home and abroad. The least that is required under the circumstances is a proper investigation of the allegations. At this point, it is clear that the interest of our workers is of no importance to the minister. If Minister Samuda is unwilling to act in the best interest of our citizens, he should resign. The workers' pleas are totally understandable. They seek reasonable protection, acceptable working and living conditions, a safe and secure mechanism to report issues, an assurance of independent investigations, and a pathway to residency as a way of protecting their rights as workers. And while it is important to maintain good bilateral relations, it is equally important for us to protect our citizens and ensure that they are treated with dignity and respect. Please remember to subscribe, like, share,